Have you ever forgotten your charging cable? Or worse, even your charger? Time to roll the dice on whatever random implement you can get on short notice and hope it doesn't go pop. Today's video is a comparison of USB charging cables and regular old USB cables. In the first video in the series, I started with some fairly good cables all around. But in this third round, like in the second round, we find some cables that shouldn't be used, as well as a bit of history for where USB cables started. I don't know about you, but I've seen some bad performing USB cables, and some got hot enough to burn you. This video is being made to find out which of these cables are up to the task of charging, and which ones aren't. Also along the way, we'll find out who is putting effort into making sure you charge as efficiently as possible. This means less wasted energy, and shorter charge times, and potentially saving you money. There are several factors to consider for USB cables. Some only care about data rate, some only care about durability, and if you're using it for a charger, like most of us are, the reason for making this video is to find out which cable has the lowest resistance. The lower the measured resistance in the charger cable, the higher the efficiency, since less energy is wasted in the form of heat. It is also a general sign of quality of a cable. Premium cables will use higher grade materials like copper, which outperform cheap alternatives like aluminum. I've never seen a USB cable advertise its resistance or some other term which states how efficiently it will charge your devices. This is the most important metric, and durability is a close second. There won't be durability testing here, but there will be lots of resistance measurements. Thanks to my patrons for supporting the channel. There are links in the description if you want to help support the channel. The full data set for these will be available on my website, and there is a link in the bottom of the description to that. I wanted to test a broad range of cables to make sure the results have context, so I divided the testing into three groups. USB-C cables, lightning cables, for Apple users, and USB-A cables to get a baseline of how far USB has risen, fallen, in terms of charging efficiency. Specifically today, I'm gonna to look at an additional 70 or so cables. I have a bunch of requests from viewers added in as well. So we have some Nemaso, Ugreen, the longer Uni cables, and more. So thanks for the suggestions and keep them coming for round four. I also have a few multi-tip or replaceable tip type adapters to see how these perform. Apple Lightning connectors are finally gonna get their day as well. Well, like them or hate them, they're probably going to be around until the last iPhone with a lightning connector is gone, and maybe the EU will save us from this. So first, let's check out the lightning cable offerings. I'm going to mix in the multi-tip options here as well. First issue here was the testing. The Apple cables have a chip in them, so they turn the voltage off if the phone doesn't request charging. So I had to get a rather backwards adapter to make this work, a female lightning to male USB-C connector to be able to test these cables. Let's go through these from the worst to the best. First up are these multi-tip adapters. These are bad. They don't pass the signal through, so can't negotiate more than five volts, and they don't have the multi-sided tips, so you have to know which way you plug in the cable. This is a total fail. The resistance one in this case, and they can go directly into the bin. Next on the list are these very inexpensive AI Nope multicolor cables. They're all USB-A to lightning, so no higher speed charging, but for the cost and then a pinch, they're going to do the work required. ZMI has been a requested brand for cables to check out, and the lightning offering from this company isn't bad. Actually, with the exception of the branding on the USB-A connector, I had a trouble telling if this wasn't an Apple cable. Apple, Amazon Basics, Anchor, and Bassius replaceable tip and interchangeable tip all trade blows for the top spots. The Apple and Amazon Basics USB-C to lightning variants were the best, and the Anchor USB-A to lightning did the best of them all. The USB-C versions offer the advantage of higher speed charging with USB PD negotiation though. So that USB-C cable means you can charge at nine volts with the Apple device. Many more cables could be tested for this. The good thing is with the exception of those cheap multi-tip cables, they all performed fairly close to each other so they would all successfully charge your iDevice. Next up in our comparison of comparisons is the giant wad of USB-A to USB-B, Mini-B, Micro-B, and USB-C. I've collected these cables over many years. These range from less than a foot to 10 feet long, and the performance goes from nearly transferring no power at all to being mildly up to the task. These cables were never really designed to carry 5 amps, well, some of them, but hey, let's push things a little for the sake of science. So in reverse order this time, let's start with the best. The Volutes one foot cable is at the top of the chart with a USB-A to USB-C port. The USB-C cables tend to top the chart in most cases. 
I also added in the USB-C to 5.5mm barrel connector adapters too. Only losing 3 to 4 watts at 5 amps is not bad for these cables. The general USB cables that used to come with your phone with a mini USB or micro USB port had about 1 ohm of total resistance. If you were to use these at 5 amps, you'd lose a lot of the power, and the cable will get quite warm. I can see one reason why this style had to go. Honorable mention, the Sparkfront Cerberus is a USB hub and a triple-headed USB cable. It's not a great cable resistance-wise, but it is also a USB hub. So if you need to power low-power basic USB devices, this has been my go-to for a while. But if anything more than a microcontroller is plugged in, the voltage drops to below 4.5 volts because that cable does have that high resistance. So this is not a charging cable, that's for sure. If you need anything higher power, go with a better cable. The Bassius replaceable tip cables, which are no longer available, I suspect because the magnets are actually fairly dangerous, did okay in the lightning round, and for USB-C and micro-B did okay as well. The cable does have extra wires, so it does pass USB 2 data along also. The multi-tip version did okay as well. Mostly, it seems like it's better to get the cable you need though. More work is going to have to be done on these replaceable tip cables. Sounds like a round 4 problem to me. The worst cable is this 1 foot micro USB cable. This thing is more of a heater wire than a cable. At 5 amps, it loses nearly all of the power in the cable and would certainly not power the device you are trying to use. It is basically a heater wire. I decided to check this wire out a little further and got a magnet. And without any surprise at all, the wire is magnetic. It is steel, not copper or even aluminum. The resistance is very high. If the cable is magnetic, don't use it. It ends with your phone still not charging and a fire. So just trying to pull a couple amps through this is definitely able to make fire. That's not what you want for your charging devices. Okay, the bit everyone cares about. USB-C to USB-C cables. The near future and now are USB-C. I know this isn't the best connector out there, but it is a small, compact, cheap, and the cables generally stay in place, so this has a place for a while. The other great thing about USB-C is how many different protocols it can support. So these cables, if rated for it, can be much more than just charging cables or slow data cables. Some can carry video signals, high speed data, and still do all of your charging. Okay, back to the bottom of the list. The worst of the cables are the longer cables, and of course, this is not really much of a surprise. The longer the wire, the higher the resistance. The Namaso and JS Aux took the highest spots, but even the worst of these cables were better than most of the Apple and most of the USB-A style cables. So there's been quite a bit of improvement, in general, with USB-C cables. Namaso is one of the requested brands, and I've been beating up a few of them with my Bluetooth speaker build, which nobody watched that video, over the last few weeks and I haven't had any problems with it. The Uni 10 foot and 15 foot cables are not bad. 15 foot and only to lose 6 watts at the full 100 watts over that distance is really usable. I use this cable for a lot of camera things, so it turns out this does have some practical uses. I'm probably going to get more of these. Amazon chose to make a 9 foot cable for some reason. They aren't the best, but for 9 foot they seem to stand out. Everything from a 6 inch cable up scores near the top for their respective lengths. The Ugreen 10 foot cable won that distance though. I still haven't seen anything top the Satoshi cables for overall efficiency versus the length of the cable, so these will keep the top spot on my test bench. Cable Creations is a close second. Alright, overall, Apple makes good lightning cables. Anchor and Amazon Basics cables aren't bad either. For cables with USB-A connection, there are a ton of options out there, and the best way to figure this out is to look through the data for what you need. Remember. None of these will support power delivery, so you're mostly stuck with 5 volts or old versions of the QC power modes, if supported by your device. Once you get into USB C to C cables, basically everything on the list is acceptable. The general consensus is to use the shortest cable possible. If you need to go at 100 watts, make sure it's got the eMarker chip. The Ugreen 10 foot is the best of the longer cables, the runner up is the 10 foot Uni cable, and the honorable mention is the 15 foot cable, which obviously I like that one. Shoo. That's just too much. This is why it's all on my website, so you can read and analyze at a normal pace, and see some of the other features like cable weights, cost analysis, and also if the cables support 100 watt charging modes, or more. There's only one of them so far, but there's a USB 3.1 PD 140 watt cable, which is the best of the 3.3 foot cables on the list. It's from eBay and it's not very expensive. If you want to help the channel out, there's links to things down in the description. For the Apple Lightning cables, it looks like Basically, staying away from anything really, really cheap is a good idea. These multi-tip 
single-sided connectors. Why? Be wary of the cable if it's really thin or seems a little too cheap to be real. When you see a $1 option and a $3 option, get the $3 option. From the requests, Namaso, Ugreen, and the Uni cables all look like solid performers for USB C to C cables. I use the 15 foot Uni cable all the time for cameras. I know older USB cables weren't made to carry the power, but you can see how bad it is now. There are a ton of cables out there, so if you have more suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. I'll have some more USB PD 3.1 cables in that round too.